Dear brothers and sisters, the entire khutbah that I want to give today is actually based upon a dua. And it's a dua that in some manifestation gets attributed to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but there is no authentic chain directly to him Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. But a powerful supplication from one of the Salaf, from one of the pious predecessors. And that is Umar ibn Abdul Aziz Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And we know from the Salaf that they had their connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they had their way of calling upon Allah that is very instructive to us to think about the way they perceived Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the narration is from Yahya ibn Sa'id. He says that كَانَ كَثِيرًا مِمَّا يَدْعُو that what was frequently recited in du'a from Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala, and I'll read it very slow. Allahumma radlini bi qada'ik. Allahumma radlini bi qada'ik. Wa barik li fi qadarik. Wa barik li fi qadarik. O oh Allah, let me be pleased with what you have decreed. Radlini bi qada'ik. Let me be pleased and satisfied with what you have decreed. وَبَارِكْ لِي فِي قَدَرِكْ And bless me in the decree that is to come. Qada is what comes after Qadr. Qada is something, the divine decree which has already manifested itself. Qadr is what is still in the works in this, in this context here. Allahumma radlini bi qada'ik. Oh Allah, let me be pleased with what has been decreed for me. And make me pleased with it. وَبَارِكْ لِي فِي قَدَرِكْ and then bless me in the divine decree that is to come. And then he says, so that I do not love that anything that you have been delayed be hastened, nor that something that has been hastened be delayed. Allahumma radlini bi qada'ik. Oh Allah, please me with your decree. Wa barik li fi qadarik. And bless me in the decree that is to come. Hatta la uhibba ta'jila ma akhart. And so that I do not love that you hasten that which was meant to be delayed, wala ta'khira ma ajalt, and that you do not, or that I do not love that you delay what was hastened for me. This dua, if we break it down, is actually a phenomenal dua and a phenomenal diagnosis of what usually happens in the frustration that a person has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at our entire existence on this earth, and this entire idea of a race against time. Every day we wake up and we feel like we're rushed from this thing to the next thing and we don't have time and we're trying to achieve this and trying to achieve that. And there's a great level of stress. And especially when the efforts and the plans that you put forward are either completely disrupted by something that is out of your control or that which you were pursuing is not coming to you as it should be coming to you with your planning. Time. I want it now. You think about the child in the car. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And many times when we're making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're implying, is it there yet? Is it there yet? Is it there yet? And that's when the Prophet sallallahu said, most people will give up on their dua. Why? Because they've made that same dua over and over again and it hasn't happened yet. And at that very moment, when it's about to come to you, the person says, Da'utu fa da'utu falam yustajabli. I made this dua, I made this dua, and it didn't happen for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those that are being wronged and harmed and oppressed. And they say, Mata Nasrullah. When is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to come? And Allah says about the oppressor, or rather, the Prophet says about the oppressor. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُمْنِ لِلظَّالِمِ حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَهُ لَمْ يُفْلِتُهُ That Allah delays the oppressor. Meaning what? He allows that oppressor to continue in their oppression until they start to think that they're invincible, until they start to think that they're getting away with it. This is working. I'm not being held accountable. I have impunity. حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَهُ And then when Allah snatches him, لَمْ يُفْلِتُهُ He does not let him go. So both the oppressed is wondering when and the oppressor is pushing the limits to see how far they can get with this. And there's a time factor involved. When is this all going to collapse? When is this all going to come to fruition? When is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? A person is pursuing marriage. 
When am I going to get married? A person is pursuing a career. When am I going to get that job? When am I going to get that opportunity? A person, you know, a couple waiting for a family. When is that child going to come? And then you have the children. When is this going to happen with my child? All along, you start to realize that we have to have a submission to Allah's timing. Allah's planning as a whole, His Qadr as a whole, but His timing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed something to come. And there's something very profound about this because as Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah said, if Yusuf alayhi salam focused on only getting out of prison, then he wouldn't have benefited from what was actually happening within the prison. And so when you're in a trial or a hardship, a person becomes so eager for that hardship to end. Ya Allah, when is this going to be lifted? That if they don't pay attention, they're missing out on the unique opportunities of that hardship to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said, one of the Salaf, one of the pious predecessors asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dream, Ya Allah, how come this dua has not been fulfilled yet? And the answer was, Ya Abdi, O oh my servant, I love to hear your voice. I love to hear your voice in dua. And what, were you, what you were getting out of those moments of dua as the delay was happening was better than what you were seeking in the immediate moment. The delay became good for you because what you attained in terms of faith and character in that delay was far greater than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have hastened for you in the moment. When you're in the midst of the trial, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushes you towards certain things or offers you the potential to push yourself towards certain things. The entire time you're saying, when, when, when? And it's important to take a step back and say, you know what? While I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this trial to come to an end, let me pay attention to the unique opportunities that exist within this trial. As the scholars mentioned, when you're pursuing a blessing, Sometimes, subhanAllah, in the process of pursuing a particular blessing, we neglect the blessings that already exist around us. And I'm not just talking about the idea of health and the idea of, you know, the, 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 the concept of gratitude and shukr for what you have. But while you're in the pursuit of this particular thing, if you develop tunnel vision, when is this going to happen? When am I going to get this? When am I going to get that? The other ni'am in your life all have a timeline. The other blessings all have a timeline. And they're moving towards a sense of expiration. So your parents are getting older while you're pursuing this. Your kids are getting older while you're pursuing this with your career. This is happening while this is happening. And if I'm so focused on this blessing that I'm in pursuit of, then those blessings are also moving on a timeline. And I'm missing out on something here. And to take a step back and say, instead of when, wait a minute, What's all this that's already around me? And how do I have a refreshed lens on a daily basis for those things? And that's one of the blessings of shukr. Shukr refreshes the lens every day on the ni'am that you have in your life, on the blessings that you have on your life to make you say alhamdulillah all over again. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. You don't just say alhamdulillah, you have a salary. You say alhamdulillah every time you have food on the table. It refreshes the lens so that you realize what I'm pursuing, if it's a halal pursuit, should not become such a focus and an obsession for me that I worry about the time that it's going to unlock itself that I lose out on the limited time of the other blessings that are around me, whether that's the people or the things that are around me. So to move on from when and to recognize subhanAllah that the delay that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to us at times is the greatest design for our lives. Of course, Allah Azza wa says, وَخُلِقَ insan, Human beings have been created as what? Ajula. Hasty, hasty, hasty. We always want things now. It's not just our children that are always pushing and saying, when is it, are we there yet? Is it over yet? Am I going to get this yet? When, when, when? It's us as well, in our own ways with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, when, when, when? When is this gonna happen? When is that gonna happen? And that doesn't mean that you don't become an ambitious person. That doesn't mean that you don't continue to pursue what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal. 
But that means that you submit yourself to the timing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you on. Submit yourself to His schedule. And stop seeing the delay as deprivation. It's not deprivation. Stop seeing the delay as denial. It's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you no. Many times it's Allah telling you not yet. And it's for your own good. And by the time you come around to realize that if you were not observing the lessons of that delay, then the delay would have gone to waste. I'm sure Zakaria alayhi salam at some point asked, well, when? Right? But no, there was a submission. I'm sure at some point Yusuf alayhi salam wondered, but when? How much longer? There's a submission to that schedule, a submission to that time slot to say that every single delay that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to me is a not yet, not a no. And that not yet could mean after this life is already over, but it's there. It's there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let you ask without giving you. It's there. But you have to wait and submitting yourself to that time. Now then go back to what Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala was saying in his dua. And he used to make this dua frequently. It's not something that they heard from him once upon a time. Allahumma radlini bi qada'ik. Oh Allah, let me be pleased with the decree. It's already happened. I'm not going to sit there and say, why did this happen this way or why did that happen? Alhamdulillah, let me be pleased with it. Please me with what is here. وَبَارِكْ لِي فِي قَدَرِكْ And bless me in what is to come, in that decree that is to come. حَتَّى لَا أُحِبَّ تَعْجِيلَ مَا أَخَرْتْ وَلَا تَأْخِيرَ مَا عَجَّرْتْ So that I only love things at their time, so that I do not wish for that which has been delayed to be hastened, nor that which has been hastened to be delayed. You know, I give you this example, subhanAllah, and it's, it's a lot of times the, the TV references and the movie references and things come to your mind. You know in those, those movies and shows where someone gets stuck in an elevator, the electricity goes out and suddenly two people are in an elevator together? Or they're in a room and the power goes out and suddenly, you know, we kind of lived that movie here when we lost our power uh, in, the, in the winter storm that happened before, right? And suddenly people have to actually talk to each other and things are frozen and put into place. And then what ends up happening when those people are stuck together for a long time and they're not able to continue the rat race of this dunya, they actually get to know each other. They refresh their relationship with one another. There's a moment of pause that's forced upon them that they don't like initially, but then once the pause is over and things resume, they're grateful for the pause. At the bare minimum, the blessing of that pause is your reconnection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there are very few people that will call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with more sincerity and more connection and more devotion and more love in their times of comfort as they will in their times of desperation. At the bare minimum, there is a qiyam that was induced. There was a tear that was induced. There was a dua that was induced. And the eyes that shed tears for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not touch the fire. And the dua that is made from the heart will immediately transition and transcend and ascend through the heavens till it reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the thing that you asked for, should it be halal and in proper means, will surely be given to you in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows is even better for you. But slow down. Don't just submit yourself to Allah's plan, submit yourself to Allah's timing. Don't just say, I know Allah is able. Say, I know Allah knows when, when it's better for me. Allahumma radlini bi qadaik, wa barik li fi qadarik, hatta la uhibba, ta'jila ma akhart, wa la ta'khira ma ajjalt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that are pleased with His planning, that are pleased with His timing that see the blessings that are around them when they are obvious and when they are hidden. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us fresh hearts and fresh lenses that are always able to appreciate the present and that pursue what is the best for them in the future. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let our future be Jannat al-Firdaus in the companionship of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let our present be Jannat al-Yaqeen, the paradise of certainty in our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us when we question Him, forgive us when we don't take the gifts that He gives to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that are grateful to Him in all circumstances and patient with His decree in all circumstances. And make us amongst those who are pleased with what has come to us 
and who are blessed with what is yet to come to us and make us amongst those that always are in a state of hamd, always are in a state of praising him. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah liyulakum wa risa'al muslimin. Fa astaghfiru innahu al-ghafur rahim.